Hi guys, this is Tash, the Starcross Stitcher. It's been a while, how are you all going? Um, I feel like I'm starting every video lately with, oh, it's been a while. Here's Scotty, she's getting massive. Hello, say hello Scotty. Look, who's that? What? There's a giant dog in the camera. She's giant, she has grown so much. She's really sleepy at the moment. Ooh, maybe she'll snore again if I put her down. Okay, all right, go on. Good girl. Good girl. <laughs> She's so cute. Oh my gosh. She makes me happy. It's really good. Um, all right, let's get down to business. God, I've been so busy. It's crazy. Um, I have two finishes. I have a little bit of haul, not too much. I have some progress. I need your help with something. I've got a couple of pasta stashes to do. Um, yeah, let's do it. Okay. So my first finish is this one. This is called Angle of Love by Cross-Eyed Cat. Um, I started this in Mania last year and I decided I'd just finish it off. It was a pretty quick finish, didn't have too much work to do on it and I'm trying to finish as many things as possible before Mania this year so I can have a bunch of new starts in Mania. Because if you don't know, the way I do Mania is, well I've done it for a whole one year, the way I will do Mania again this year is I'll work on a different piece every day for the whole 31 days. Um, I've got like 27 whips or something, so I need to have four new starts. I'm hoping to finish a few more things before then, so I'll have a few more new starts. I love new starts, what can I say? Um, so yeah, this is Angle of Love. It's a, you know, a little bit nerdy. Um, unfortunately, some of the flosses are a bit dark, so you can't quite see all the mathematical formulas that are on it. But there's the um, C equals 2 pi R. Um, area equals pi times radius squared, um, a plus b, a, c squared equals b squared plus a squared, and then of course that's c, um, l equals a plus b plus e, sorry, a plus b minus e, and there are the angles, and half a plus 2b. Oh, the area of the triangle is half a times 2b. It sounds like I don't know math. I was really good at math in school. I got the math prize for year 12 um, for my school. So I'm, I'm, I'm not bad at math. I'm just failing at actually reading this, honestly. <laughs> um, it looks a lot better on the chart. Um, I didn't use the charted colors. I used four colors that a friend had died for me many years ago as part of a pay it forward. Do you guys remember pay it forward? It was a thing back like 10 years ago on the blogs. It was like, a thing people used to do so the idea was you would sign up for someone's pay it forward and they would make something for you you know they might stitch you something they might dye you some threads and fabric which is what Mel did for me um, and then as the recipient what my job to do was to pay it forward to five more people um, so five people would sign up for me and I'd make them something or whatever and then each of those people would have five people would make something for five other people so it multiplies across the community really really quickly and it's so much fun. Um, of course, I'm a horrible scoundrel who never sent my things on. <laughs> I made something for two people um, and then I stopped stitching and never sent them on. And the other three people who signed up for me, actually I think only two other people had signed up for me. Um, yeah, I never even got to making things for them because I stopped stitching and I moved down to Canberra and my life changed. <laughs> so now that I'm back at stitching all this time, has passed 10 years um, and I want to, I, you know what, I actually would like to still pay those things forward. And I've tried to contact the people who signed up for my thing. I know there was Nikki and Kiri and I can't find either of those people. And I can't find where I wrote down the names of the other two people who signed up for it. Um, so I, I guess I need five new people. If you want to, me to pay something forward to you, let me know. Um, write down below. Um, what this means is that I'll make you something and send it to you, of course. Um, I'll probably just stitch you something and make it into a small and send it to you. But you have to pay for it to five other people. So you need to have, I guess you need to have an Instagram or a floss tube channel where you make videos. Um, yeah, so you can advertise to people to sign up for my part, pay it forward. Um, hmm. Yeah, so if you want to pay it forward, leave me a message below. 
you'll need to have an Instagram or a YouTube. So leave me your Instagram name or your YouTube channel and tell me that you'll be happy to pay it forward to five other people and I'll pay something to you because I, Mel sent me these gorgeous things and I want to pay it forward. So let me know if you want to pay it forward. Let's start a floss tube movement thing. Hashtag pay it forward 2018. <laughs> um, yeah, that's dorky. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, so that's Angle of Love. Yay! I love this. Um, it's nerdy and romantic and sweet and I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Um, the next thing I finished, two finishes, was Regal Peacocks by Teresa Wensler. Let me get, let me fold this so you can see it a bit better. That is better. So, Regal Peacocks. Um, this was in a Just Cross Stitch magazine from 1989. And look at the colours, you guys. That's amazing. You know, this was a lot of work. A lot of work. It was a big pain in the bum. Um... Yeah, a lot of work. The chart is all hand-drawn, um, so it's quite hard to read some of the symbols. There are mistakes in the symbols, like some of them have arrows pointing to the right and arrows pointing to the left, but they're both supposed to be pointing to the right, as best I could interpret. Um, so I kind of just did my own thing in that area, to because there was no floss listed for one of them, so I just used the same floss as the other one. Um, I stitched it two over two, on 36 count opalescent even weave. Um, yeah, you can see those sparkles. Wow. Um, God, it's so pretty though. I mean, it is worth all the trouble. It's gorgeous. I love this. I want to stitch it five more times. I'd love to put this on like the lid of a the lid of a box or something because I think it's beautiful. Gosh, the colours though. Ter oh, this is, this is by Teresa Wensler. Don't know if I said that. Um, Teresa went through so much detail. The colours are a little 90s maybe, or 80s as it were. I think it was 1989 that the chart came out. This chart came out when I was five or six years old. Crazy. Yeah. Love it. I love that. God, I love that. It's beautiful. Um, I didn't say so, but this was stitched on 16 count white Ada. Nothing special. Um... I need to go back to my last video. I was talking about how I've been at the coast and I forgot to show you some haul I got. There's a shop called Sew and Tell. Sew and Tell. Um, and it's in Berry, New South Wales. There's the address there. Uh, shop 2, 133 Queen Street, Berry, New South Wales. Um, so we drove from Jarvis Bay up to Berry. It was an hour or so drive, probably less actually. And I got a few fabrics. These fabrics are by, um, oh, what's it called? Stitches and Spice. Um, they were an Australian dyeing company that's since stopped dyeing. Um, Naomi's stopped dyeing. I don't know why. I wish she hadn't because my favourite fabrics ever. See this Takata 2 here? This is stitched on my favourite fabric in the world ever. It's called Celtic by Stitches and Spice. And it's like cream with like a really subtle purpley all the way through. I love it. This is Camo Fudge. How amazing is this I am so excited to find this I can't even tell you oh my god I couldn't believe she had it in stock I was I was like is this allowed <laughs> I was like what what's happened here I've just I've just stumbled across a massive back quarter this is um cashel 28 count um 70 by 50 centimeters which is a fat quarter it's a little bit bigger than a fat quarter I think and it was that's can you see the price forty dollars and seventy cents Pretty expensive, but I mean, to get this fabric, wow, love it, amazing. God, it's so good. It's so good. I mean, that is perfect. The colour you're seeing there is perfect. Oh my god, what am I going to stitch on this? I'm in love with this. Oh, I'm in love with it. Okay, and I got another one. I'll fold that up later. I'll fold that up later. You guys don't have to watch. Oh no! Dropping everything. Okay, I'm back. Um, I got another one. This one is Sugar Cane Crunch, also by Stitches and Spice. Look at this. Ooh. Ta-da! Yeah, that colour's perfect. Look at that. Oh, I'm so disappointed that Stitches and Spice are no longer dying. I mean, they were the best. They had the best fabrics. And I, I have a few other pieces, of course. 
um, but yeah God, look how beautiful that is it's a little washed out for you yeah it's a little bit washed out because this light is so bright there you go that's a bit better oh love it wow um, yeah so I'm so pleased with those I couldn't believe I found them I just felt like I was stealing something when I walked out of the shop um, they did have more by Stitch and Spice, but they were all, um, this is Cashel as well, same price. Um, yeah, they were also blues and pinks and stuff, and I'm much more into these sort of neutral colours. Um, what else did I get? I got Crinkle Crinkle. Everything today is crinkly. I got Fabric of the Month from Under the Sea Fabrics. This is Gaylene Belfast. There you go. It's very pretty blue it's looking a bit paler to you than it is in real life blue and green and yeah that's a bit better blue and green it's very pretty it says Galene is a Greek Nereid Nereid and is the Greek goddess of the calm seas I hope you, this does look like a calm sea it's beautiful um I hope you like this pretty blue color next month's color is Ain. A-I-N-E, Leslie LaFleur, Under the Sea Fabrics. Gotta love Under the Sea Fabrics. Um, I do love Under the Sea Fabrics. I don't love Colour Cascades Fabrics. She's behind again. <laughs> I don't think I've had one since... I might have got January. Um, I don't know what to say. I think I'm done. <laughs> I want to support Australian dyers. Of course I do, because she's the only one we've got. But I don't want to... <laughs> Yeah, I think I'll um, just use her for when I have a specific fabric in mind because she's, it's just not reliable to um, expect something from her every month. She obviously can't keep up. Um, so, more fabric of the month. This is XG Designs. Um, remember last time I was complaining that I hadn't received my XG Design fabric of the month yet. Um, and I got it, I think, the next day <laughs> or a couple of days afterwards. Um, this is January's fabric of the month. Really pretty peachy, pinky, yellowy colour. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, you can see some yellow here. It's pretty amazing. Um, I have no idea what I'll use it for. Um, it's a fat quarter at 46 count, so I can put something massive on it. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, it's so washed out for you. Maybe I should just turn my light off. Yeah, kind of. Um, yeah, 46 count, it's called Valentine's Wish, that was the January, um, and every month she sends you a little surprise, and I actually love this, I think I'll stitch this, um, she sent me a little chart, a little freebie, hold it back here so you can't read it, it says my love, and it's got a peacock and some flowers, and I think it's so pretty, I actually will stitch that, vintage tulip designs, there you go, vintage tulip design. Um, so I assume you could probably find their designs on Etsy or something. Love it. Um, and she sends a couple of little threads. This is green peas and this is my little tulip. So pretty. Um, so that was January. February came about one day later. <laughs> um, no, I think I got this one. I got January on the Tuesday and it was right at the end of February. And then on the uh, Thursday or Friday, the 28th, I got February's Fabric of the Month. And after waiting so long for January, I was really relieved. <laughs> um, so here's February, and I love this. Oh my gosh, I love this. I love this. This is incredible. Holy cow. I can't wait to stitch something on here. As I said, again, it's um, 46 count Bergen linen, and it's called, I think it's Brown Sand. Yes, Brown Sand fat quarter again so I can put something massive on here I love this oh my gosh it's so good so good and a little special gift in February was oh yeah forgot about that um cafe latte thread really pretty I hope you can see that variegation there really pretty um and the pattern was a little Easter bunny rabbit happy Easter there you go. So there's February. And March I got on Friday, two days ago. It's Sunday today. One week until my birthday, guys. 
my birthday is Easter Sunday. I'm having a six day weekend because um, I've got, I'm using my May art, March audio on the last day on the Thursday and I'm using my April audio on the Tuesday. So I'm giving myself a six day weekend just because I can. Okay. So, um, March fabric of the month was called White Mustard. And there it is. It's looking a lot whiter for you than it is. There's much more of the yellow colour. Um, there are definitely plenty of white parts, but even this looks all white to you, but there's actually a fair amount of the mustard colour in it. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I like it. I do like it. Again, no plans. I don't know when I'm going to use it, but I will. Love it. Um, so that was the three months that I originally signed up for with the XG Design Fabric of the Month, and I just signed up for another six because these colours are gorgeous. This is all the primitive colourway, by the way. She does a primitive and a bright, but I went for the primitive because, as I just said, I prefer the like neutrals and so on. Um, and she sent this floss, which is called Deep Impact. <laughs> cool. And she sent... This design, oh look, it's a little spring Quaker. And all of these designs are by Vintage Tulip Design. So yeah, I love them. I love this Fabric of the Month Club. It's my favorite thing. It's my favorite thing. I'm all into that. Um, Something else I got at that Sew and Tell shop in Berry was, my mom actually bought this for me. This is called Brun Brunette. Um, it's Cross stitch by Lenart based on an Alphonse Mucha painting. I'm trying to get the glare off. Look at that. Look at her. She's so beautiful. So gorgeous. Look at her. Look at the detail in that headband. Anyway, my mum bought me this. I was like umming and eyeing over it. I was like, oh, I don't know. I mean, it was 50% off the original price. It was meant to be 99. I got it for 49.50. It's the kit. It's got everything. Fabric too. Um, beads, metallics, um, yeah, so I am happy I bought it, I've got no idea when or if I'll ever stitch it, um, I don't know why mum bought it for me, she was just feeling generous I guess, um, I was telling her that these are hard to get, um, hard to find and I think it's beautiful, and, yeah. um, I got a present from Anna, um, at the Canberra Cross Stitches group, um, I didn't go to the Christmas party because, because I was away? I go away this yeah I did go away um yeah so I must have been away and the first time I saw Anna was in February or March and she gave me a Christmas present and it's a needle minder and if you don't know this is Elliot from Pete's Dragon and he's so cute and I love it and I love it and I love it um and of course she got it from needle minder obsessions which is our our Australian needle minder maker needle minder obsessions on Etsy uh, the shop is called Stitch in Mad. S T I T C H I N M A D. Um, so Anna, thank you so much. That's so sweet. Um, I, everyone was surprised that I even knew the dragon's name. I don't know. I do like Pete's dragon. It's so cute. Um, so that was a very nice gift. Um, and then Mum gave me this Sampler and Antique Needlework Collection 2001 to 2010 DVD. Um, cause she already has the whole collection DVD and she didn't realize she had this one already. So she gave me this. I'm like, oh, thanks. I'll take it. Um, yeah, it's not in here. It's in my CD drive at the moment cause I was looking at it, obviously. Let's turn the light back on. So I'm so excited about this. I'm, um, the old aviary sampler, they're all on here and I'm dying to stitch that. Um, what else? There's a lot more. There are so many things in these magazines that I want to stitch, so that's good. And I went and bought myself some fat quarters. My mum owns a quilting shop, so, well, an online quilting shop, but she has ridiculous amounts of fabric for sale. So she absolutely busted me for buying these, but especially this one, because she has all these Regent Street lawns. Uh, whoops, it's upside down. How cute is that? I love this. It's only a fat quarter, so might not be big enough to make a project bag, but it's certainly big enough to make a grind guard. But because it's a lawn, it's really fine fabric, so I don't know if it's tough enough to act as a grind guard. Uh, but we'll see. So cute. Um, this one, which I love, so pretty. 
don't know what I'll do with it. Again, only a fat quarter. I had the idea of getting these for Grand Guards because I don't think a, quarter, a fat quarter is enough to make a project back. And that's what I'm planning on doing next weekend is getting out my sewing machine and not only searching some fabric for a few new starts I'm going to have, but um, also trying to make a Grand Guard or something. <laughs> so, and this one, I love elephants. If you didn't know, elephants and squid and octopus, they're my favorites. I love this, it's so cute. There, those colors are much better. So cute. Um, it says, there we go, Hullabaloo by Iron Orchid. There you go. They were just loose fat quarters um, in my local hobby sew. So yeah, they're all gorgeous. So next weekend, I might make some grind guards with those. That's all the haul. I showed you the haul, I haven't even showed you my progress yet. Um, I've been working on um, And a Forest Crew, I forgot what it was called for a moment then, by Rosewood Manor. Um, I moved the key snap, so you probably can't see a lot of what I've been working on. Um, I've made a boo-boo. So this tree here, it's one stitch too far down, and you can tell that this bottom row here is actually one stitch lower than the bottom of the chart, which all these are at the bottom of the chart. Well, this is at least. So yeah, I'm going to have to do some unpicking. I think instead of unpicking this whole motif, what I'll do is just unpick everything from here down and fudge it somehow. Just make it, <laughs> just move the bottom part up. Just take out that one single stitch there or something. I don't know. I'm definitely not unpicking the whole thing. That's, that's madness. Um, but yeah, I haven't worked on this yet this weekend. I love it. Um, if you didn't know, this is a stitch along. I'm doing two motifs a week. I'm working with my mum and with Stitchy Owl. Hi. I had a really sweet shout out from Kawaii Stitcher. <laughs> um, she said, I'm the first floss tuber she ever watched, which is madness. Um, that's insanity. How did you keep watching after watching mine? That's crazy. Um, because mine is so good, nothing else could compare, right? No. <laughs> no. I'm kidding. Um, yeah, so I need to work on this for this weekend. I haven't done it yet. Oh, there's my hand. Ha, ah, giant hand. I might have to edit some bits out of this video. Here is Tranquility Sampler. I decided that, yep, yeah, I'm pro I'm going to turn that up. Uh, yes, I'm probably going to work on this. Um, try and do one motif on this a week as well, because then I can totally finish it by the end of the year. Um, so, you know, uh, you've probably seen that one. You probably haven't seen uh, these two. Um, the thing is, these, this took me, both of these, took me about 10 hours each. So when I say I'm going to do a motif a weekend, it's basically a day and a half of my weekend stitching. And that I just can't really keep up with. Um, it's too much. So I've decided I'm going to put that on hold for now. I still want to finish this by the end of the year. Um, I'm going to probably not try for that one motif a week until after Mania. That's all. It'll still get done. Um, I'm just going to wait until after Mania to spend so much time on it. Because my focus until Mania is to finish a lot of small things so I can have a lot of new starts. <laughs> so this is um, the Tranquility Mystery Sampler by Sticky Dean von der Lienberg. Put that away down there. It's so hard now I've got a puppy. I've got to put everything in places where she can't reach them, step on them. <laughs> Um, she loves needle minders because they, they sparkle and blingy, so anything that has a needle minder on it is at risk of being, um, not eaten, but, you know, sniffed and played with. And to reach my needle minder, she, I've seen her actually put her foot on my fabric and sniff up for the needle minder, and I went nuts when I saw that. I was, I was so mad. <laughs> um, the other thing, one of the other things I've been working on is my blanket. Remember I told you I was making this blanket? This is the Hydrangea Stripe Blanket from the Attic 24. Love these colours, they're so pretty. Um, I'm about, apparently I'm 20% done. So it looks short, it's only going to be five times this long. Um, the width, the width is king size width. So this is just a tiny section you can see here. It's a lot wider. Um, king size bed, but yeah, that's coming along. I'll probably finish that sometime in winter. Um, so the thing I've been spending most of my stitchy time on is Japanese octagon box. And I need your help. 
I need your feedback on what you think about this black bit and this blue bit I've been experimenting with. So I'm going to put it in a video here and please let me know what you think. Hi guys. Um, here is Japanese Octagon Box by Chatelaine. Um, I finished the first five panels as you can see. I'm just making a little video to get your feedback on some changes I've been trialing. So you can see here I've been doing this black um, my, my original idea was to put black between each panel, um, all the way around, like that. It's a um, diagonal satin stitch, I don't know if uh, you'll see enough detail there. Yeah, you can actually kind of see the satin stitches. Wow, this looks amazing. You can really see a lot of detail here. Isn't that pretty? Guys, look at my beautiful stitching. <laughs> um, anyway. I need your feedback on this black part here and on this blue green part here. So you can see here I've put this blue green, it's called slate blue, I've put this around the little lozenge I guess here. Um, they, it's charted to be blank like this one, but I had the idea to put the blue green there. And now that I've done it, I'm not sure if it looks good or not. Um, my overall idea was, okay, if I put the black between each of the panels and I put this blue green down here, then the only parts where you'll actually see fabric will be um, behind the motifs here and in, this, in the top panels. So it will actually look like a screen um, with holes in it at the top. And you'll, it's like you'll be looking at the landscape through the screen or through the windows or something. Um, and I like the idea, but I just don't know how it looks. I think it looks dark which I don't hate I guess I don't hate that it's dark the thing I really hate actually is that it's a lot of hard work it's really hard work um <laughs> yeah it takes a long time it's taken me about two hours to do that much black maybe not maybe an hour and a half um it took me a while to do this blue um I'm actually less certain about the blue than I am about the black um now I look at it through the camera though overall it looks good it looks really good. I don't know guys, I'm really conflicted. I'm just going to give you a bit more of a close-up of this because it looks amazing here, guys. I'm sorry that my hands aren't going to be very steady, but I thought you might like... There's an over one bird. Some queen stitch pine cones. The top. There you go. There's a nice little scan over... Of Japanese octagon box. Just the first five parts. I still obviously have a lot of work to go. This chart's really weird. So in this panel the bird is charted for two light greys and a black and in this panel it's charted for light grey, dark blue and black. Um, and there's a lot of places like that where things you would think would be consistent between panels are different. Um, but you know I think that's pretty um, typical of Martina's charts. There's a lot of places where you have to sort of use your own judgment to figure out how would be the best way to do it. Anyway, guys, please leave me some feedback uh, about this black here and this blue here. Do you like them or not? Should I just do one of them and not the other? What do you think? I do like the idea of having it as though you can look out the windows to the landscape. So let me know what you think. Thanks, guys. Okay, so... Any suggestions? What do you think? Do you like the blue? Do you like the black? I actually like the black more than I thought. I When I started the black, it looked too dark. Um, but as I brought the black down, it actually looks the way I thought it would look. The blue, I'm not sure about. Maybe I need to do more before I decide if I like them or not. I don't know. I don't know. Please, please, please give me some feedback. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I think I'm going to put that aside for the rest of the weekend. Um, wait to hear back from a few people please 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 give me your feedback i really i'm really not sure i'm second guessing myself and i think i've been thinking about it and looking at it for too long but i am now no longer objective at all um so let me know what you think okay um what else we did the pay it forward oh pass the stash pass the stash guys if anyone wants to stitch angle of love please say i would like to stitch angle of love and i'll send this to you that's all. Um, it's the original chart. It's out of print. It's by Cross-Eyed Cat. So if you want to just say, I'd like to stitch Angle of Love. Um, you know, don't say Angel, say Angle. <laughs> um, that's the joke, I think. Everyone thinks it should be Angel of Love, but it's Angle of Love. Um, and also, this is the magazine. 
um, that the regal peacocks came from. Let me see. I'm not going to do a full flip, a full flip through. But there's the regal peacocks pattern there. There's another one. Um, the cover is. I love. I actually love this. Um, it's called A Man of Sense by Sheepish Designs. Ooh, glare. It says, when in love, I do commence, may it be with a man of sense. So funny. So funny. Um, it's just cross-stitch, January, February, 1989. As I said, so I was five years old. Um, <laughs> yeah. Love it. Um, yeah, if you want the magazine, please say, I would love the, I would love to have the just cross-stitch magazine. That's all you have to say. Um, and I will post those two out to people who want them. So, is that all? That's all. My life's been busy, guys. I've been not stitching as much as I want because just busy planning stuff and getting stuff organized. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking so much about starts in my head. That's all I'm thinking about is starts. Um, I'm so excited for Mania. I have a few starts planned. Some days I'm excited. Some days I'm like panicking, going, "Oh, I already have too many whips. I don't want this many. I've just got to cut them all out." Um, I have to start a wedding sampler for my brother because his wedding is on the 1st of August and I've got to get going on that. It's going to be that Stitch Rovia wedding love. I'll put in a picture. So pretty, but I'm going to convert the heart to blue because, I don't know, I said what colours do you want and they said blue and orange and I'm like, ew, no, but I'll do blue. <laughs> um, so yeah, is that all? I feel like I've forgotten a lot of things. <laughs> Um, oh, I have forgotten something. So I've been participating in the um, Cross Stitch ATCs exchange, which is on Instagram. Look for at Cross Stitch ATC. Um, so it's an exchange. Every month you stitch an artist trading card, which is 3.5 by 2.5. Um, just stitch something 3.5 by 2.5, then stick it on some cardboard, write your name on the back and send it off to your recipient. And there's a theme every month and you do an exchange and then you also receive one. So in January I sent one off to um, Calico Luna and I'll try and put in a photo here of what it looked like. The theme was love is love um, and that was to celebrate the passing of the uh, legality of gay marriage in Australia. Yay! Um, so I sent that off and the one I received in return was from Lizzie Knits and this is Love in many different languages. Love is love, February 28, 2018. And she also sent me some DMC. Thank you so much. These are the best colors too. You always need white and B52 and a crew of black and red. Love it. Thank you. Cause you know, DMC is expensive in Australia. So every time I order from one, two, three stitch, I try to add a few, um, a few DMC flosses to bulk up my collection. And they're not that cheap on 123 Stitch compared to like you guys with your Joann's coupons. Madness. Um, so I've already stitched and sent off February, but it hasn't been received yet, so I can't put a photo in. Um, but the recipient should get it pretty soon because it was sent on the 20th. Actually, it's only the 25th, so it'll be a while. Um, and I haven't received mine yet, but it will come. Um, I love it. Okay, I'm done talking. Um, I will see, I might see you guys next weekend. Since I have a six day weekend, <laughs> yay, I, um, might take the time to make a video again. I've been busy. I'm sorry. I've been, I haven't even had time to stitch because I've been, my evenings have been filled with other stuff and it's a shame. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to work more on Japanese octagon box, but I'm going to wait for you guys to tell me what you think I should do about the black and the blue. Um, Okay. I'll catch you guys hopefully next week.